my objective is to make it financially unsustainable for them to continue to kill black people unjustly. The film Civil deals with many meanings. Obviously, I'm a civil trial lawyer, a civil rights lawyer, not a criminal justice lawyer. I don't have any power to arrest a person and to put them in jail and hold them criminally accountable. And I think Nadia Harbrin did a, a very important job showing the distinction. I was home in May in lockdown, just like the rest of America. And, you know, my last film, Becoming, came out early in May, and three weeks later, George Floyd was murdered. You know, as a black filmmaker, I'm just sitting home thinking, I have to be doing something. I have to be out there. I have to be telling a story. This is what I do. And I was really scratching my head, just trying to figure out, where do I get in? Where's my jump off? How do I begin to tell the story of this historical moment that's happening? Shortly after that, uh, the phone rings, and it's, it's Kenya Barris. And he tells me, I'm working on this project with Ben Crump, and we're looking for a documentary filmmaker to basically jump in with him right now. It's all going down, and we want to make this film. And he's like, are you interested? And it was just like everything that I had put out there and had hoped for had just came to me. I met Ben very quickly on a Zoom, and I knew that that was, that was the next thing that I had to do. I do want to pay the utmost respect to Kenya Barris and uh, Roger Ross Williams, our incredible producers. Roger has such gravitas when it comes to the documentary film space. And then to Kenya Barris, you know, this young man who's trying to project the black experience of America onto the screen. All I did was pack my camera bag and get on the road. I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I joined Attorney Crump. What I immediately saw was just this person who had an incredible warmth to him, a sense of humor, sort of this personality that I think was really unexpected that we often don't think of when we think of civil rights lawyers. So as a filmmaker that really enjoys character study, I knew that that would really draw an audience into him and his story and his fight. And so that was a really important part to me to make sure that that really shined amongst all the other things that he was doing, but to stay connected to him as, as a very, very unique individual. And watching this documentary, it is a salute to the genius of Nadia Hallgren. I had things revealed to me that I was not even aware of. I try to compartmentalize all of this and not give way to emotions. But what she captured a lot of was after I would talk to family members and different people, I would find myself rubbing my head, rubbing my temples and so forth. And I never was aware that I did that so much. It was almost like a physical manifestation of the mental anguish I was dealing with and dealing with this uh, tragic loss of life. You know, we have a scene in the film we call Banking While Black, and there's this young mother, Shira Brown, who goes to cash a $90 check and gets accused of committing fraud, and the police get called on her, and it's so sad, and that experience left her unable to buy milk for her babies. When I was filming a scene like that, I, tears were just falling into my viewfinder. You know, we have stories of people being murdered and things like that in the film that are also deeply sad. But that story reminded me of my own mother and experiences that I've had in my life. I just think that having that very personal connection to the people in the film and the experiences allowed me to tell the story in a way that I hope is very nuanced and deeply resonates with our audiences because we know that that's something that not everyone will experience, but everyone needs to know is something that happens. I'm often asked, Ben Crump, how do you deal with the mental strain, the mental anguish of dealing with such heartache, such tragedy, such death on a constant basis? 
And I, I'm a student of history, so I look back at what my personal hero, Thurgood Marshall, said about dealing with constant injustices. He said, you have to stay focused on the mission because if you're not focused on the mission, if you become emotional and you can't be strong to stay focused, then you can't prevent future injustices from happening. And so when these families who have experienced the worst loss imaginable, what you are trying to do is be strong for them too in that moment when they need somebody to try to help them make sense of something that makes no sense whatsoever. And so I just try to focus on the mission. I was very fortunate to have one of the most talented edit teams, I think, working in documentary filmmaking. We had Lindsay Utz, Anad City, and Nathan Pomoir. I had some deep conversations with them about the experience that, that I had with Ben and what was important for me to highlight in terms of his personality and really who he was. So when we went into craft our story, some of the first things we did was pull those moments, knowing that this is a very heavy film, it's very emotional, and what would help bring levity to some of these deeply tragic stories was Ben. We tried a lot of things, you know, it's all like one big experiment that one day just works, you know, and you just hope it works within your edit schedule. <laughs> I'm in the public's eye so much, but that's in my professional life on a very specific mission. It's another thing entirely for me to be the subject of the camera lens, not just my work, but my personal life, uh, my family life. And so it was a big decision, but in talking with Kenya Barris, our executive producer, and then getting to meet Nadia Hargren, this uh, just young uh, genius behind the camera. They made me feel a little more trusting to put my life on center stage. With all of that said, it still was uh, concerning because a lot of what I do is a safety issue and I'm okay with it being me, but to have my family and the people you love most now become known and then possibly have a lot of the insults or anything was very concerning to me, but Nadia promised me that she would be very careful. So I did it because I understood the mission. And the mission is we have to speak truth to power, not only in the court of law, but more importantly in the court of public opinion. Ben always is talking about speaking truth to power. And I think for me as a documentary filmmaker, you know, I'm an observational documentary filmmaker. And I think that what I hope we're able to do with this film is without having to add anything extra to just what was happening, that people can really see these stories and, and the powers that be are able to understand more of what's happening. I mean, what we try to do is take these moments that Ben has, especially with families that he's interacting with, and show what we don't see in the news and show the ripple effects of these, these stories that just feel like they cycle in so quickly, we almost aren't even able to keep up with them. I know that we have this incredible global audience uh, on Netflix to share this film with, and that's something that I'm really grateful for. The movement that happened in 2020 and 2021 was a global movement. We show in the film that there were people that took to the streets in South Korea, in Austria, in places that you may not even expect. But it was that global mobilization that really put the pressure on in America to say, you need to look at this. You, see, you need to see what's happening. And so we pay an homage to that global group of people who like stood up for us, you know, and like connected with our experiences. I'm excited for people to see that and see themselves in this film globally. And just to have a deeper understanding of black life in America and how deeply woven racism is in every corner of our lives. Looking at what attorney Ben Crump does, and like he says in the film, get into the arena and do something. We can all do something. You know, I really encourage people to, to take that as a call to action and be like, cool, I can do something too. It is my hope that people think about the 
Netflix documentary Silver for exactly what the word denotes. Now more than ever, is that we champion tolerance, that we champion humanity, that we champion civility and being civil versus resorting to violence. We have to show our children that there is humanity in all of us, and we should show respect to that humanity.